My name is Rami Yacoub. I'm a music producer and songwriter, born in Sweden, spent most of my time there until I moved to LA a couple of years ago full time to focus uh, even more on the music. There's a great music scene in Sweden, no doubt about it. You kind of feel the pulse more in LA, if that makes sense. You also stumble upon things. You meet people you're not, you weren't supposed to meet, somebody rolls into the session and then you meet the, you know, that guitar player that you know plays on, on and works with 24 Golden and you start talking and then you book a session the next day. It's like a domino effect in the LA. In the old days, you, it, you had to you know have 20, 30 thousand dollars to even buy equipment, good equipment. Now everything is laptop based. So the setup we have is our laptops, all the plugs, the programs we use. Some use Ableton, Cubase, Logic, Pro Tools, and then we. We plug it into an Arrow, an Interface, or an Apollo. The only outboard stuff we use, a good mic chain. It will consist of a uh, uh, Chandler, Chandler TG2, and then going through an 1176, or a TubeTech Seal-1B, and then to uh, mostly an SM7 when we write songs. But some songs have, have even, like the final product product has been on an SM7. Can't Feel My Face with The Weeknd was on SM7. Sam Smith, How Do You Sleep was also on SM7. Sometimes we switch to a more high-end mic. Uh, so that's the only oddball stuff we're using. Besides, you know, a keyboard and guitars and basses. Uh, everything runs to the, you know, to the laptop. I'll probably pick up the guitar and find the chord structure for it. What sound of the guitar, how to, you know, how to layer the chords. And then I'll find the tempo, record a eight bar loop of the guitar, um, or it might be 32 and then pick, cut it together so it's correct. Um, and then I usually just add a simple bass uh, from a plug, it doesn't have to be a live bass, or I can start with a keyboard, you know, a piano or a synth, and not a guitar. And then I'll most of the time just loop that for about four minutes. Um, I might add a loop or a kick just so I can hear the tempo. And then I turn on the mic through the chain. On the program, I usually have my vocal chain. So it'll be, you know, um, it'll be auto tune, compressors, you know, effects, EQs. So basically, when I sing, it sounds, you know, pretty darn good. Just boosts my ego. Um, but it, inspi it inspires me. It sounds finished when I start singing. Uh, I merely focus on the song, that's why I keep it to like bass and keyboard or guitar. I do my runs, record them, and then I listen through them. And I mark out and color um, what I feel is good. Like this could be, this feels like a verse, 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 pre-chorus, pre-chorus, chorus, chorus. And then I'll just listen to it again. And I'll start killing the least good verse and then the second least verse. And then after a while, I have a verse and a pre and a chorus. And I'll cut it together so it makes sense. And then I'll listen to that and I'll start fine tuning those melodies till they're perfect. And that's basically how I create a song. So he usually sits, you know, and works with the sounds and fine chords. I can be on the guitar and like, what if you do, you know, A minor and then go to this chord? Till we find a chord progression, but he's so good. He, he usually finds a good vibe while we sit around and tune in and, and kind of, you know, we love that, that's great. And then he records that, adds a quick beat to it, add a bass, and then we just sit and jam melodies together, basically. But it, but it could also be when we work together, we do something great, and then like, like an instrumental, a music piece. And then I'll be like, okay, give me the MP3. I'll go up to another studio, and I'll just do my annoying runs for an hour, and then I'll go down and we'll listen to them together. Because uh, sometimes in my headspace, I like sitting by myself, and he'll do the same thing. He'll do some runs, and then we'll listen to both of them, and we kind of pick the best ones and start cutting from there. I've always urged people to find a, a, a great group of people they work well with. Based on that, you all have all the love and work great together, you know, like great friends. I love writing lyrics, but I can't finish them myself, like fully. Uh, so if I'm gonna be paired with a songwriter, as long as I know they have like great concepts and great lyrics, I'm all good. But if they tell me they're great with melodies, but not lyrics, I'll be like, oh, damn. I, I, I do believe all, you know, working in that specific group of people 
uh, the more you know each other, the more you work, the better you will get. Every student is different, and there is not really one studio that's built perfect. Direct Live, it's, it's, it's just a, a, an incredible tool that just like, you know, helps you simulate a perfect studio, which will give you uh, uh, the tool to make the mix as honest and great as possible, so it will sound great wherever you go. So in my previous studio, um, the Stockholm-based one, which we acquired about 10 years ago, it was already a built studio, a finished studio. We had a big problem that unless you were sitting right in front in a perfect sweet spot, it sounded great, but you could just move your head back and the bass was just overwhelming. So you sitting next to your partner, it, you, you didn't hear what he was hearing if you, if you weren't sitting like this basically with the speakers. So we had somebody come there, a sound guy to kind of help us solve the problem and he recommended some bass traps and how many we needed, measured everything and we were super excited waiting for those things to arrive and they he built them two months he he calls <laughs> and asks if we can come out and help him unload and i'm like <laughs> unload what like i didn't get it and we come out it's like a huge truck with seven or eight i mean the size of a refrigerator and our studio was not big i mean i was like mind blown we carried in one and two and three and those took up half the studio i'm like dude we can't i mean we can't have this it's, it's we can't even sit in the studio doesn't make any sense. But what Direct Live did was eliminating that problem without having to sit on a refrigerator. So basically, wherever we're sitting in, in, in that area, we all heard the same thing. So it balanced out the basis. So we kind of got a more honest picture of what it sounded like in, in, in not just where the sweep spot is, because you rarely sit like this and you're by yourself. Like you, you sit next to him or you lean back. And you're like, oh my God, why is that? And you had to sit like this. So it didn't make any sense. So that was a, a great tool for, for the old student that I had.